Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my Zero Carb Life. I'm Kelly Hogan, and today I'm going to give you a rapid fire list of ways to get rid of your sweet tooth and all sugar cravings forever. Number one, avoid all sweet taste. Whether it is the creamer in your coffee or the stevia or the sugar-free gum, anything sweet is going to keep what Dr. Joan Ifland calls the lizard brain in the back of your head alive, just craving, craving more and more and more. If you can cut it out completely, all sweet tastes, after four likely very intense days of craving, you actually have a shot of getting off of sweet taste forever. It will get easier. Four days that are really hard, a few weeks that are kind Kind of hard and then you can be free of a sweet tooth number two eat more fat whether that's butter crispy pieces of fat from the air fryer or from a skillet you can get fat trimmings from a butcher a fatty steak have some heavy cream egg yolks these are all high in fat and it will be very satiating if you are absolutely stuffed full of fat nutrient dense foods you are far less likely to go hunting down a donut number three get enough protein. So you don't have to overdo it on just straight up lean protein. But research shows that if your body does not get adequate enough protein, that you will never feel full. So you can eat sticks and sticks and sticks of butter, but unless your protein requirement has been met, you're still going to feel hungry. So if you want to make sure that you get enough protein and fat, eat a fatty steak or three, and you'll make sure that you cover your bases on protein and fat. Number four, help yourself out and get the carbs out of your house. If you're having to look at it and smell it all the time, you are not doing yourself any favors. Smell is powerful. It's going to trigger memories and going to make you think you're craving things that you weren't even thinking about. So when you're watching constant carb commercials and you're following carb filled accounts and you're seeing it and thinking about it and your husband is eating ice cream right in front of you, you need to try to make it easier on yourself in the first few weeks, especially the first few days. And just get it out of your house. Ask people for help. Ask them to remove the triggers from you. Keep it out of sight for a while. You would never expect a recovering alcoholic to sit around sniffing bourbon all day and still be perfectly okay. Of course not. Help yourself out. Stay away from the substances for a while. Number five, just chill a little bit. So if you are constantly stressed all day at work and then you come home and you're doing hardcore cardio and your mind and your body never get a break, you're probably going to crave things that you wouldn't crave if you were to just relax a little bit. It's okay to take some walks. It's okay to lift some heavy things when it's enjoyable. But if you're pushing and pushing all day long and you chronically are under stress physically and mentally and emotionally, you are probably going to want to stress eat strusels all day long. Get rid of as much stress as you can. Relax. How about number six? Let's redefine dessert. Some people say, I can't finish a meal without dessert. Okay, so have some extra bacon. Have some heavy cream with a little sprinkle of cinnamon on top. For me, I would skip anything sweet, but cinnamon seems to be okay. You could redefine it as something that's not even food. Maybe as a treat, you play cards or you take a walk, play the piano, watch a little TV with maybe a decaf coffee and some heavy cream. It doesn't have to be sweet or sugary in order for it to feel like a treat. So let's redefine dessert. Number seven, try salt. I have heard that salt cravings and sugar cravings are very easily confused in your brain. So if you feel like you're craving sugar, take a little handful of salt, throw it back, put it on your tongue. Some people say under your tongue and it'll either A, tick you off because it's not what your brain really wanted or B, it might actually help. Either way, it won't hurt to try. Number eight, destroy the temptation. If you have let it into your house, you have smelled it and you think, oh my gosh, this is it. I'm going to eat this thing and I don't want to eat this thing. Destroy it. May I suggest dish soap. <laughs> One strong moment of putting dish soap on top of it, then you can relax. You're not going to eat it covered in dish soap. You might eat it from a trash can. I know I did. I used to have a terrible sweet tooth and I would go after it even in a trash can. Soap it. It's dead. Number nine, keep it interesting. Carnivore does not have to be boring. There are a wide variety of animal products that you can have. Also, you can use mustard, hot sauce, some cleaner mayonnaises like a Primal Kitchen or a homemade mayonnaise. You can have seafood. Call a barbecue joint and ask them for a pound of two of just unsauced, I would suggest unsauced barbecue. Seasoning is fine. Ask for a pound of two of brisket without the sides. Get burger patties, omelets, scrambled eggs, soft scrambled is my preference, fried 
bread, eggs, cheese, bacon, deviled eggs, pork belly, pork chops, chicken wings. So many ways to keep a carnivore diet interesting and delicious. I do skip anything that tastes sugary or sweet like barbecue sauce or ketchup, but a wide variety of meats and seafoods can be absolutely delightful. Number 10, strengthen your frontal lobe. And the way you're gonna do this is by removing all stimulation for five to 10 minutes per day. Research shows that if you can sit and totally clear your mind, close your eyes, sit. I highly recommend that you don't lay down because you will be asleep. <laughs> But remove all stimulation, all noises, all chatter, even all long, deep thought conversations. Just let thoughts come and go for five to 10 minutes per day. Your frontal lobe, the decision-making part of your brain that will allow you to make great choices will actually become more active. They've proven this on brain scans. So for five to 10 minutes every single day, if you can just get alone, without any devices or any people, no stimulation at all, you could actually strengthen your frontal lobe and cause that lizard brain of addiction to settle down. Number 11, think of the full effects of this treat that you're contemplating. Don't just imagine the three minutes of pleasure that you might get from eating it. Think about how your clothes might get tighter, how you're going to have more cravings, how your meat is not going to taste as good for the next few days. Imagine the belly pain that you might have and any gut issues that might return or bathrooming problems. Think about the full effects of the food. As my friend Joanne Ozig said, think of the full package and not just the moment that it's going to be in your mouth because that won't last long. But the after effects could last for days or weeks. Number 12 read the label. If a treat sounds good and looks good, turn it over and read the ingredients list. If you wouldn't give your child a spoonful of azodicarbonamide or disodium and nosinate, why would you put that in your own body? So if you can read the ingredients list and truly know what every single thing is, at least you're aware of what you're putting in. 13, get a hobby. You know how we tell kids, you're not hungry, you are bored. If you have a belly full of meat and you're still hanging out at the fridge, seriously, you're probably not hungry, you're probably bored. So get a paint by number, learn to cross stitch, get a coloring book for adults, take a spin class, do some yoga with YouTube videos, learn to crochet, do a giant puzzle, draw, sketch, play the piano, take a dance class, Learn to do something new that will keep your brain occupied instead of just constantly thinking about sugar, sugar, sugar. It would be far better to go make a friend, go make a baby, whatever. Just step away from the bagels. 14, get some sleep. Go sleep it off like old fashioned addicts of old always did. <laughs> Getting some sleep will help you make better decisions and you can sleep through the hardest part of the craving. When I used to have cravings, I would go eat some bacon or eat some meat and then just put myself to bed. 15, determine if you're actually hungry. So if you don't want plain meat, my guess is you aren't actually hungry. You might be bored or stressed or lonely or just feeling all the feels, but you're probably not hungry. So if you don't want a plain burger patty or some scrambled eggs or a hard boiled egg or bacon, you aren't hungry. Go do something else. Come back later. Try again. 16, get out in the sun, make yourself go out the door. I've tried it myself. When you're craving something, either check the mail, sit in the sun, walk in the sun, just go outside. Many people report that if they can just go outside for a few minutes, it will take care of a sugar craving. 17, remind yourself that these cravings are temporary. They will not last forever unless you keep giving in. It's like a toddler at the store. If they're screaming for candy and you give in, they're going to scream harder the next time. If you say no and no and consistently keep saying no, they will learn. It's over. It's done. It won't last forever. The cravings will get shorter and further apart until you finally just feel free. Okay, that's it. My 17 tips. These tips can be used whether you're breaking up with processed foods, going keto, trying carnivore. That's what I do is I eat only animal products. That's what I've done since 2009 because that's what I need to do in order to feel my best. But no matter what you need to do to feel your best, if breaking up with sugar is part of it, I hope these tips can help. If you have others, let me know in the comments below. If you have a quick second, like, subscribe, comment, any of that helps to spread the word. Okay, I hope you all have a great day. Bye.